morning, Year 8. I hope you're all well and I hope you're still all staying safe. So as a starter, I want you to recap last week's lesson and I want you to just write down five things that you learned about the Blitz and the Battle of Britain. So please pause now, spend a couple of minutes writing down five things that you've learned about the Blitz and the Battle of Britain and then we'll move on to today's lesson. So today's lesson. Were the British right to bomb Dresden? Now, Dresden is a city in Germany, and we're going to look at what the British did and whether they were right to bomb Dresden. And we're going to investigate why the British bombed Dresden. And we need to judge at the end of the lesson whether or not the operation should have happened or actually was it wrong to go ahead with it. So what was the point of mass bombing? So the Germans have bombed Britain. OK, and they targeted our cities such as London, Coventry, and the Germans had hoped that the British public would lose heart, their morale would decrease and the pressure on the government would mean that they would ultimately surrender. Now, we know the British obviously didn't surrender during the war. And there was obviously a war in the air. Um, you know, we looked at the Battle of Britain. So what do the following things have to do with the war in the air? I'm going to give you four bits of information. One million coffins, destroy the RAF, radar, two months. I want you to look at them figures um, and statistics and information, okay? And I want you to try and work out what do these following things have to do with the war in the air. So please pause now, have a guess. Don't worry if you get it wrong, okay? And then we'll go over the answers. So... Britain had expected mass bombings of British cities, so it ordered one million coffins to be made. So well done if you got that right. Number two, when the Germans attacked Britain, their first job was to destroy the RAF. Ultimately, they if they were to remove the RAF, then they would have basically had no one attacking them in the sky, and then they could have been successful in their bombings, and ultimately Britain probably would have surrendered. However, the RAF had developed radar, which you've looked at previously, and that was a system that warns when German planes were approaching. And the Germans ultimately lost many planes, so after two months they gave up their invasion plans. So well done if you've got any of those right. Congratulations. So the bombing of Dresden. Okay, I want you to spend a couple of minutes reading through this information. OK, of why the bombing of Dresden was important. OK, and whether you think from looking at this information, was it right to bomb Dresden? So spend a couple of minutes reading through this information and have a think on whether you think actually bombing Dresden was the correct move or actually it wasn't acceptable. So the Dresden question, you've read the information. OK, over 800 RAF planes dropped 2,600 tonnes of bombs on Dresden. And as you can see on this map, I've done a map of Germany, OK, and you can see the capital of Germany is Berlin. And then you have other cities that you may have known. So those that are football fans, if you follow like Bayern Munich, Bayern Munich is in southern Germany. OK, and you have other cities such as Hamburg in the north. Germany is a big country. And Dresden, OK, is very close to what we now know as the Czech Republic. The Czech Republic, though, didn't exist at that point. OK, but it was known as Czechoslovakia, sorry. Um, but, yeah, it was basically to the east of Germany. So Dresden had a lot of wooden buildings. OK, so it's very vulnerable to attack. And when the British bombed Dresden, temperatures reached a thousand degrees Celsius. So boiling water is at 100 degrees. Temperatures reached a thousand degrees. So the conditions in the city when they were being bombed were absolutely awful. And because of the wooden buildings, 70 percent of the city was destroyed. And between 35,000 and 150,000 people were killed. Now, you have to weigh up so far. Do you think that in war, casualties happen, okay? And the British were responding to the bombings that the Germans had done. And therefore, yes, 35 to 150,000 people killed is tragic, but was it needed basically to end the war and to basically, you know, cripple Germany as a country? 
This is where you have to think. And we're going to look at some more sources around this. So this is some of the pictures that you can see. OK, and a lot of some of the buildings did survive, but a lot of them you can see in this picture have basically been destroyed by the bombings. Um, and as you can see again in this picture, yeah, a lot of them, like even the concrete ones, really badly damaged. And then ultimately, yes, it is quite a shocking graphic image, but many, many people were killed. And you can see the Germans piling people, okay, that they found potentially in the rubble and these unfortunate people, okay, um, were a result of the British bombings that happened. As you can see as well, uh, the railway track and you can see all the rubble and destroyed. So, I want you to click on the link which gives you another bit more information about the bombing okay so your teachers will send out this youtube link it's about four minutes long and please watch this there are some images as i've just shown you that can be a bit upsetting but it's really important to understand that the british and the bombings bombings kill people so please watch this video now and then when you're ready to continue please click back on the powerpoint so you've read some information about why the british have bombed dresden I want you to investigate now, was it acceptable that the British bombed them? And we're going to look through some sources. And we're going to look and basically assess, actually, yes, they should have bombed Dresden, according to the source, or no, we shouldn't have bombed Dresden, according to the source. So what I need you to do on a sheet of paper or on a Word document is draw this table in front of you. So I want you to draw this table, and then when you're ready, you're going to have 12 sources to assess. We are going to go through the first one together now. I'm going to read it through and I'm basically going to explain to you, do I believe that, yes, this source suggests we should have bombed Dresden or no, we shouldn't have bombed Dresden. So, source one. There were non-stop explosions. Our cellar was filled with fire and smoke and was damaged. The lights went out and wounded people shouted dreadfully. Many, so many desperate people came in from the streets. It is not possible to describe explosion after explosion. We saw the burning street, the fall in ruins and the terrible firestorm. We saw terrible things. Cremated adults shrunk to the size of children. Pieces of arms and legs. Dead people. Whole families burnt to death. Burning people ran to and fro. Burnt coaches filled with civilian refugees. Dead rescuers and soldiers. Fire everywhere everywhere fire and all the time the hot wind of the firestorm threw people back into the burning houses they were trying to escape from and remember because it was a thousand degrees outside people would have tried to escape their houses but they would have been met with an excruciating extraordinary heat so it would have forced them back into their house now this is from a source from lofa metzerger i'm sorry if i pronounced that wrong um and he's a survivor of dresden so if we look at this source, OK, generally, are we thinking it's for or against? I want you to have a think for 10 seconds and then I'm going to explain what I believe and why I think it's against. So ultimately, when you're looking at this source is a very negative source. The whole tone of the source is negative. So really, this is kind of explain that it's against the bombings of Dresden. And the reason why I think this and what I would put in my table, if we go back to the table, what I would put in no we shouldn't have bombed Dresden is I would try to add some evidence. So I would say source one is negative and we shouldn't have bombed Dresden because it cremated adults, pieces of arms and legs and dead people and whole innocent families were burned to death. This isn't suggesting that the bombings are very good. OK, this is suggesting that innocent people have been killed because of the war. And actually, there was fire everywhere. And people who ultimately, yes, the Nazis were awful. OK, and they did many atrocities. But many Germans, OK, were innocent in this. And many died because of the bombings that the British did. Now, there are going to be other sources that suggest maybe they are. It should have happened. But in terms of this source, there's a lot of negative words. And 
as we move through, and it is very much an A-level skill. So if you can develop it now and if you wish to do A-level in the future, if you can look at words and look at the tone of the language and it will help you with English, um, the tone and the words used is very, very negative. Um, dead people, soldiers everywhere, you know, fire, burning houses. These aren't positive words. Explosion. So really, from just reading the source, we can see that there's a negative tone. And I would probably add that in to my table. So if I go to the table, I would say source one. Oh, I spelled source wrong. Source one is negative as it has a negative tone. Some of the language language used such as explosions I should I should quote this actually shouldn't I explosion dead people arms and legs cremated show the horrors of the bombing and how they impacted on German people. Therefore, this source does not support the bombings. So if you've looked at what I wrote, and I'm sorry that I spelt a couple of things wrong while I'm trying to type, um, source one is negative, as it has a negative tone. And some of the language used, such as explosion, dead people, arms and legs cremated, show the horrors of the bombing and how they impacted on the German people. And therefore, clearly, this source does not support the bombings. Now, another thing that you could add if you really want to challenge yourself is you need to also look at the person that wrote it. Now, he's a survivor of Dresden. Now, we don't know whether some of his family members died, but he would have probably been there at the time and he would have suffered through the bombings. So clearly, if he's going to suffer and he would have seen much death, he would also have a negative opinion. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to read through the rest of the 11 sources. Um, this will take you a while and you need to spend some time reading carefully. OK. But once you've done them through, OK, I would like you to move on to the final task. So please pause now and spend some time reading through the sources and completing your table. Finally, you've looked at all your sources, OK? Hopefully you've done all 12 sources and you've seen that some people say, yes, Dresden, you know, it was right to bomb them. And other people saying, actually, no, it wasn't right to bomb them. And some people think that the operation should not have happened. And Sir Arthur Harris, as you can see in the picture, was the commander behind the plan. And some people say he should be charged for war crimes. He killed many thousands of people. Other people, however, say, actually, war, there is always casualties. And you cannot have a war without innocent people dying. So do you believe the operation should have happened. And I want you to just write down, do you agree? And I want you to give me some reasons why. And you can use some of the sources to support your answer. But do you agree, yes or no, whether they happened? Once you've done that, you've finished today's lesson. Hopefully, you've done okay. And if you do need any help, please don't forget to ask myself or Mr. Bentley any questions that you have regarding around this topic. And if you wish to read more around it, just email us and we can send you some more information. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye.